Hello friends, how's it going? I will let live get rolling um, and pause just a minute. But I uh, know we've probably, first off, I'm trying to do this ring light deal, not the natural light. Just don't worry about all this. I'm tired of having to get ready <laughs> to present. This is Pajama Preacher back in action and I just have too many kids running around to care, honestly. So um, I though know we've kind of, hi, 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 hi. Thank you guys for jumping on. I know it's probably seemed like we've been uh, pretty quiet for a bit, but it has been a really, really incredible season of God speaking, revealing, ministering to us personally, um, frankly, unpacking a lot. But I have been trying to grow in discernment of learning when he gives prophetic revelation uh, is this for me personally, to apply personally to myself first? That's where I always begin. Is this for our house fellowship group? Is this for um, our ministry? Or is this uh, a public word that you would like me to share, Lord? I, I've been trying to grow in learning and discernment um, what he intends and, and when. And so um, I wanted to share with you guys a word that I received about a month ago, um, about a month ago, the Lord spoke something uh, to my spirit, honestly, kind of interrupted me um, and revealed something to me. And I, I've been holding on to it um, and I shared it with our house fellowship group. And um, man, it, it, it seemed timely to what the Lord was doing and what we were all kind of hearing and processing. Um, and I, so I sort of pocketed it, but he has only continued to um, compel by the Spirit for me to share with you guys openly. Um, someone by the name of E.J. Gaines, I don't know if you all recently saw his post um, about the, the baby being cut in two, but when I saw his words, and actually a girl from our house group shared it, and she was like, wow, ah, same revelation that we came into. Um, I felt it was a confirmation that God is actually speaking and revealing this to many. EJ's uh, breakdown and, and teaching of it was slightly different, but um, I felt like a, a level of confirmation that the Lord is speaking to his church, to his people, um, uniformly kind of in this regard. And so I want to share um, this word with you and how it even came about, and I just want to hand it to you. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I want you to take and discern and study and um, I pray that those with ears to hear would uh, receive and um, hopefully this is an encouragement and equipment and also just sort of a tool that we could walk in some wisdom and discernment. So um, I'm going to pray before we even start and then we'll we'll kind of share uh, what he's, he's given. But Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, Heavenly Father, Abba, we call you out by name, Lord. We come under you as your children, as your sons, and as your daughters. Lord, I just praise you and I thank you. I thank you for your rich love and your mercy and your holiness and your goodness and your glory and your power. God, I thank you that you prevail, that you have victory ultimately, that you are the one true God, the Holy One of Israel, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Father, I pray right now um, that by the blood of Jesus, you would just anoint my head with oil, that the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit would enter into this place. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place uh, to speak and to minister and to deliver the words that you uh, gave and revealed and unpacked, God. I pray um, that you would uh, bind my lips of anything that is my own understanding or interpretation, Lord, and, and by your Spirit, please use me as a mouthpiece um, to equip and to hand those who are tuned in and listening um, a word of value, a hard one, but a holy one, Lord, that we need in this time. Um, God, I pray that you would cover this space, this technology, this, this time in the blood of Jesus, and that you would move in power. We trust you and we love you. We, we invite in, Lord, we just welcome in in the spiritual realm. We cry out to those who, who need to hear uh, that they would enter into this time and into this moment, Lord. Um, we commit it to you in, in Yeshua, the Messiah's name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so it was um, 
about a month ago, like I said, uh, obviously so much has been going on um, from COVID to uh, so much on the, the racial front to many things within the church. It's been a very dynamic time. Um, I think even for those walking close to the heart of the Father and knowing intimacy with Him, it's still been so much so fast. It's been rather disorienting. Um, and it's forced so many of us to our knees in really powerful ways, and I praise God for that. Um, but about a month ago, we're here in Atlanta, so we're really in, in the thick of, of a lot that's been going on, and our hearts have just been um, in intercession and uh, in intimate, one-on-one -on -one, uh, love and care and discipleship, and um, just burdened, just burdened out of great empathy and, and compassion. And so um, we were in a morning worship session uh, every morning. I would encourage you guys, if you can, to incorporate this into your uh, days as well. But every morning um, we spend time in worship. We spend time in prayer. We have uh, devotions brought to the table and uh, we just seek the heart of the Father. And one morning we were just worshiping and it almost like... It just kind of overwhelmed me. The Spirit of God came upon me and began to show me um, some, some vision and give me some understanding of what was ahead, specifically um, coming in the fall. Uh, and so he began to give me sight and some revelation of what was coming in the fall over the world, over the nation, but but most specifically, as my heart is inclined to, over the ecclesia, over the church. And um, he began to give me this revelation, and it, it, it's hard, but I want to remind you guys of something that, uh, a quote I heard recently that just sort of resonates what uh, my heart feels. I heard someone say, history belongs to the intercessors. And so I think we, we, we have to understand that if we... Um, have the prophetic seat that we hold or if uh, like a gift of the spirit to prophesy that if God we hear him he speaks to us or we have vision or understanding um, by him it is almost always coupled with the purpose of intercession he shows he speaks he moves to those whom will respond um, with discernment with wisdom whether that be by action um, by you know sharing truth or by interceding, um, many of those all sort of in one. And so while this was sort of a hard picture, a hard revelation, I wanted to share it publicly with you all because history belongs to the intercessors. I hope so many prophetic voices look absolutely foolish like Jonah did. And, and even, come on, God, you showed me all of this. I said it, I, I did what you said. And what is this? Like, I hope at the end of the day, we look foolish because prophecy brings about discernment and brings about intercession that shifts the course of history, that it, it invites, it looses his grace to pour out and his mercy and his power, and that we truly see kingdom come here on earth uh, as, it, as it is and as it will uh, be forevermore in heaven. And so um, I don't share this to speak fear. I don't share this to bring worry. Um, I share it to invite intercession because history belongs to the intercessors. So um, about a month ago, I was praying, seeing such division. Uh, again, I speak over the body of Christ as a whole, over the church as a whole, seeing such division and um, so many encampments being taken um, for a number of different topics, but everyone's sort of taking their camps because it's really easy, right? It's easy by the flesh to just choose a camp to take. It actually takes Galatians 5.25 to live by the Spirit and to, to stay in step with the Spirit day to day, hour to hour discernment that by the Spirit we may understand the complexity of God and know that the complexity and the power, the heart of God is not rightly um, or fully facilitated in any one camp here on earth. Uh, here by uh, the power and the construct of man. But when we live by the Spirit and stay in step with the Spirit, topic by topic, issue by issue, person by person, 
thought by thought, we walk and we live seeking after his spirit to hear the voice behind us telling us which way to go. But instead, I saw um, a lot of division and encampments being taken, and the Lord just overwhelmed me and, and spoke uh, the fall, November, um, a, a wave coming, essentially. Um, and what he showed me was just, not just um, globally or nationally or, uh, oh, He's coming. We invite you in. We invite you in, Spirit. Not just politically, but um, that the body of Christ, the enemy wants nothing more than a death sentence over the body of Christ for division to occur to people to hold on to encampments. And what he showed me is if we do not begin to intercede, if we cry out for an earthly leader with all of the answers, with all of the, um, if, we, if we hang our hat on someone bringing about what we need, the healing that we need, the restoration that we need, the redemption that we need, if we hang our hat on any person or any man-made encampment to, to do just that, we will um, know death. And so I saw um, friends divided from friends in the political time coming ahead in November, in the fall, due to health stuff, due to political unrest, due to civil unrest. I saw sisters in Christ, friends um, splitting and dividing. I saw longstanding relationships um, just being fractured and broken. I saw um, intimate relationships, knowing divide and knowing confusion and knowing frustration and just a lot of splitting and tearing and breaking. And I said, Father, what is this? Like, I don't like seeing this. And what are you saying? What are you speaking? And really what the cry of my heart was is, God, what is the answer? Because we are to be in this world, but not of it. We will feel all of the effects, the weight, the pain, the affliction of the world, but we are to be set apart from it, a peculiar people. We are to be a unified body of Christ that walks in clarity, in discernment, in um, strength, in resolve, and it was hard seeing what I was seeing. And so I said, Father, what, what is the answer? How do we um, pray? <laughs> and, and for those who are crying out for an earthly leader, whom I know there will be none that will have the answer. In fact, really dangerous, that will actually become the cry for the Antichrist. We know scripturally. Just like we talked about this the other day, but just like in the Old Testament when they cried for a king, we want a king, we want an earthly leader. God says, you don't really want a king. You have me, you have my spirit. And they said, no, we need a leader. And ultimately history will repeat itself. I don't know if this is news to many, but the Old Testament prophesies the new. And so what you see leading up to Christ's first coming is a very duplication of what we see leading up to a second coming and it will be a cry in many instances that the people of God will rise up even uh, in deception for an earthly leader that the world will uh, cry that will invite in the manifestation of the Antichrist though we know the Antichrist spirit is busy at work already in these days and so I just was praying Lord what what is the answer what do we do what do we say? What do we tell the people? And he spoke, he does this. I don't know if he um, speaks to others in a similar way, but uh, he will literally give me scripture reference, like the name of, of the scripture. Uh, and I have to go look it up. Um, and he said, 1 Kings 3, 9. Y'all, I'm going to be completely honest in all humility and say, I have no idea if I have anything in 1 Kings memorized. <laughs> but he spoke 1 Kings 3, 9. And so I opened my Bible, um, literally, as we're still worshiping, and I just flipped to it. And this is when Solomon is praying for wisdom, as Solomon is seeking to lead the people. And 1 Kings 3.9 specifically says, Give your servant 
Therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern your great people? And I said, Lord, this is my cry. This is what I'm asking. Who is to govern your great people? And he spoke to me and said, it is by my spirit that my people will be governed. It is by my Holy Spirit that my people will be led. And our responsibility, our invitation in navigating what is ahead, great civil unrest, division, pain, brokenness, it will only be by our prayer saying, give me understanding Understanding, an understanding mind, give me wisdom uh, that I may discern between good and evil, for you are the only one who's able to govern your great people. So in response to the cry that comes up of we need an earthly leader to bring our answers, to bring our clarity, to bring hope, to bring peace, the response of the Holy One of Israel is no, you already have the leader that you need. It is my Holy Spirit who will govern and who will lead. And what you must begin to intercede for and pray for is that upon the people of God, there would be an outpouring, an awakening, a fresh anointing and a revelation of understanding of wisdom and of discernment that all of our lips would begin to cry. I need understanding. I need wisdom. I need discernment in this season by your spirit. That spirit's not going to encamp you in one thing or another and it feels so safe and you bank on all of it. That spirit's going to lead you daily, hourly, minutely in every interaction with every person, in every conversation, in every word that you speak, in every thing that you share, in every beat of your heart and breath of your lungs, that spirit governs and leads us intimately and carefully. And you will look radical at times in response to that. And it will, it will disorient and break down anything built upon a weak foundation. It will call you back to the heart of the Father that will disorient everything you know, newsflash. And it will begin to reconstruct. He will be faithful to reconstruct on a newly laid foundation that is purely rooted in his heart by his spirit. And so what was so beautiful is I'm sitting here saying, what's the answer, God? And he literally spoke exact scripture and reminded me, it will be by my spirit that you will gain wisdom, discernment, and understanding. And I thought, that's enough for today, Lord. That I will, I will, I will continue to uh, process for a while that it is only by the Holy Spirit the people of God will be governed rightly and that we must hold fast to the Spirit of God to lead us, especially as the days progress, especially as the end draws nearer and nearer, which every day we wake, we are near to the return of our great Messiah. Every day it will be by his Spirit that we will be led rightly. But he uh, took me to continue to read, and this was what was so powerful, because like I told you, a lot of this tied to the fall, to um, the, the, the political climate ahead, to the times that will be upon us, and the civil unrest that will come, which some civil unrest is important powerful. Jesus was a disruptor. He was a disruptor of so many systems and he was a disruptor of so many established things. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking, you know, at Pentecost, we often think, praise God, like the Holy Spirit was poured out and what a move of incredible power. But he spoke to me one day and he said, and what did those people go home to? And I said, what do you mean, Lord? And he said, what did that actually look like? You see, we read the text and we think revival. Amen. Well, guess what? Revival, the birthing of something is always messy. And what the people who were present at Pentecost experienced was an outpouring of the Spirit where some perceived that held them standing in opposition to the state, to Rome. What are you? Are, you're following this Jesus? Because he resisted the political, you know, uh, governance of the time. And others would have perceived it as a resistance of the religious system of the time. Well, what are you? You're following this Jesus. He's the one who said the temple would come down. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees are outraged. And this Jesus, disrupted everything and revival came but it wasn't just this beautiful powerful we pray for revival and then it all felt good most people went home and were probably I would imagine by the spirit rejected even by their families rejected by by 
those who really were great with comfort, whether it was comfort under the governmental side, don't disrupt too much. We don't want Rome doing any more. Please, please don't roll with this Yeshua, this, this one who, who opposed the state, and also many who said, what are you challenging the religious institution? Please, what are you doing? This is our, our structure. This is the institution we know. And Jesus said, no, by my spirit, you are the temple. You are the church you are where the power lies as your heart is transformed and so revival's messy so's birth i could give a whole word on the the correlation of those two things but let us not be so naive as to think we can pray for revival and then it looks and feels just simple and pretty revival is disorienting and it is the holiest of all things because it draws all people back to his dynamic mysterious, profound heart that, that will not be encamped uh, in, in any one thing. I say that to all groups on all sides. And so if we, the people of God, believe that whatever earthly institution holds our loyalty, well, then we have forsaken and blasphemed the one true spirit of God who is to wholly possess our worship and our praise, who will lead us in the way we are to go and who will complete what he began, who will bring a good work to completion. So he continued me forward and I wanna read this through you guys and I wanna sort of give you the keys to um, unlocking the prophetic revelation of this story um, that he gave in this season. So this is what it means when he says the word is active and alive. It breathes and speaks dynamically different things at different times. When we read the word uh, in spirit and in truth, truth, we understand the black and white spirit. It comes alive to us and we understand the very living applicability um, that he leads us through. So it goes on in, so or in 1 Kings 3, 16. It says, then two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. The one woman said, oh my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house and I gave birth to a child while she was in the house. Then on the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth and we were alone. There was no one else with us in the house only we two were in the house. And so right away, what he began to reveal to me was the house representing um, uh, uh, the earth, the, 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 the creation, the formation of the father and all um, the people really within it. And I see significance in the one speaking saying, I gave birth to a child while she was in the house. On the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth. And there's significance there in the third day. In the third day, the church of Christ was born on the cross. The people of God truly birthed forth when Christ himself proclaimed, it is finish and gave of his spirit and completed the work on the cross. It was there, it was there that, that the beautiful birth pangs were bringing forth life. And on the third day, he rose. On the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth and we were alone. There was no one else with us in the house. Only we two were in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. So if we see these two women as Christ and the adversary, Christ is saying all the people, the house, those who dwell, I have mine. I gave birth to mine. With my great labors, my great effort, my great sacrifice, I gave birth to my people, all those who would profess me as Lord with their lips and be justified in their heart, who would believe in me as Yeshua Messiah, the one whose blood is perfect and sufficient, the one who is the firstborn of many brethren. I gave birth. And this one, the adversary also has many in his hand. In fact, we don't like this, but scripture says, if you are not a child of God, you are a child of Satan. We could unpack that one later. But he says, and this one, this one gave birth as well, but this one killed its child. The adversary is killing the creation, dead people 
who need to be resurrected to new life. But it says, and this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. There is a suffocation by the enemy that is killing the image bearing creations of God who reject this mother and who are born of the enemy truly in their opposition to rebirth into spiritual life. There is a suffocation that comes, a crushing by the enemy and it kills and it says in the night because she lay on him and she arose at midnight and she took my son from beside me while your servant slept christ is saying the adversaries taken my church is is deceiving my people is stealing the fruit the inheritance the the birthright the identity of my people this one took my child at midnight from beside me while your servant slept and laid him at her breast and laid her dead son at my breast when i rose in the morning to nurse my child shout out to the nursing mothers it's been a four and a half year journey anywho when i rose in the morning to nurse my child behold Behold, he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning, behold, he was not the child that I had born. But the other woman said, no, 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 no. The living child is mine. The enemy wants to deceive us to believe the ecclesia, the body of Christ, it's mine. I own it now. I stole it. I took it. It is actually mine. And the dead child is yours. The first said, no, the dead child is yours and the living child is mine. Thus they spoke before the king. Then the king said, the one says, this is my son that is alive and your son is dead. The other says, no, but your son is dead and my son is the living one. So the king said, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought before the king and the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was alive, Christ, Yeshua, our Messiah, the savior of the world, said to the king, because her heart yearned for the life of her son, oh my Lord, give her the living child and by no means put him to death. But the other said, the adversary said, no, 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 he shall be neither mine nor yours. Divide him. Then the king answered and said, give the living child to the first woman and by no means put him to death. She is his mother. And all Israel heard the judgment of the king that the king had rendered and they stood in awe of the king because they perceived that the wisdom of God was in him to do justice. And what we see in this picture, what I perceived by his spirit in this story is that right now, the church, the ecclesia, the body of Christ, it is, it is in limbo whom do we serve it's been stolen in so many ways the, the the minds the hearts the understanding of people stolen in so many ways and Christ is coming before the father and saying this is my bride this is my church. I'm telling you the adversary wants it, but its children is dead. The fruit of its womb is death. Mine is the living one. And the enemy's saying, you know what? Just divide it. Just cut it in half. Just ultimately kill it. And then we can each have a piece and that will be the solution. You see, the enemy wants nothing more than the division of the church. The enemy wants nothing more than a disunified body because, a, I don't know if that's a word, an ununified, a disunified, a, a, a baby split in half is dead. A house divided cannot stand. The ecclesia split in two is a dead body. And Christ says, no, I'll make the sacrifice. I'll make the sacrifice. I've already done it. It was the cross. I'll give it all. I'll give everything I have. But let my child live. This is the just heart of a loving mother. 
that says division will bring death and I speak life over my children, life over my body, life over this living baby. And because our heavenly father is a just God and a good God, the adversary will not prosper. He will not be able to deceive. He will not be victorious in slicing the baby in two because the sacrifice of our holy, loving, powerful, merciful king, our intercessor, our intermediary, he says, no, the life is worth it. I will suffer the loss for the baby to live. And guess what? The work of the cross is finished. He doesn't need to suffer the loss anymore. He already has victory. And so we have to come into the understanding and the mentality that Christ gave of his life, that his body may live and prosper. And we must come into agreement with the truth that by the spirit we are led, by the spirit we are governed, that division is, is, is the work of the enemy to kill what has life. And now there is a difference that you must press into and understand and seek the scriptures for in the division of the Holy Spirit who comes to divide like a sword between bone and marrow, who comes to do heart surgery on us and cut out things that are not of him. There's a difference in like, the division of cutting off a tumor that doesn't belong on a healthy body, then the division that comes by cutting the body in half because there's trouble and there's cancer, so let's just kill it. This is a different sword. This is a different death. And we as the body of Christ must remember as civil unrest in, in, in an ungodly way will come, as division threatens to kill the body of Christ, we must pray for what Solomon prayed for of wisdom and discernment and understanding. Because again, there is a refinement and a sword that comes to cut off what is not of him, to prune. But there is also death that is reaped by a perverse sword that wants to split and kill. And a house divided cannot stand, a baby cut in two cannot live. And our king has made the sacrifice and our father has already judged and ruled rightly. Then it will be life for this child. It will be life for this body. But we must trust Christ as as our intermediary, And we must live in discernment by the Spirit as our governing leader, the one who teaches, convicts, reveals, counsels, comforts. We must walk in step with the Spirit. History belongs to the intercessors. And so if he is showing that there is going to be great fragmenting and friction to come in the world and over this nation, then we must Begin to pray now for wisdom, for discernment, for understanding, and for humility. Because what I love, what happens if we sort of rewind back, when Solomon prays for these things rather than riches, than prosperity, than um, authority, than whatever it may be, it goes on to say the Lord blesses him for praying for what is most important and says, since you sought these things, these things too that you did not even ask for will be established unto you. When we pray for humility, wisdom, and discernment and understanding by the Spirit, we seek first the kingdom of heaven and all else is added unto us. All else will be added unto us by his will, by his hand. And I think our hearts have to posture themselves in a a spot of humility to seek what is most important to, to live in tune with it, even if it disorients what we know, to greater understand and learn the heart of the Father, and to greater walk forward in unity, not in the encampments of what we think is the full embodiment of X, Y, or Z. No leader is the full embodiment of the leadership of Christ our Lord. No, no, no encampment is the full embodiment of the heart of God. And so if we want to live in divisive and confusing times, we must live in step with the Holy Spirit. He gave me a word that I'll wrap with um, as I was uh, was out of different scripture, but um, 
he gave me the word alignment. And he spoke that the body cannot function properly with strength, effectiveness, and speed when it is out of alignment. He spoke this to me when I was like dealing with some back pain, so it all clicked. So too, the body of Christ may be alive, but it is unable to function properly with power, strength, effectiveness, and efficiency, with purpose, when there is disconnect and it is out of alignment. My prayer became, God, please bring alignment within our marriage, within our family, within our team, within our home church, our fellowship group, over the nation, over your body, over the globe, in your name, not by the hands of man, but by your spirit, align your people unto you, unto you. And if that is not our prayer, then we're praying, uh, we're all over the place. God's not, ugh, I think, I'm, I'm just saying the same stuff over and over, but I, I want to emphasize alignment, ourselves, the spirit of God, the son of God, the father. When we have alignment personally, we will pray for alignment in our marriage, myself, my husband. Well, let me get the children down here too. The children, myself, my husband, the spirit, the son, the father, align us in your ways and your will over our ministry, over our team, over our neighbors, over the body of Christ. We pray alignment by your spirit that we may know full mobility, function, speed, efficacy in a broken, hurting world that doesn't need to see the body of Christ taking a sword to each other's throats over meaningless things. And it also doesn't need to see the body of Christ taking a sword to one another's throats because we trust whichever political party we think encompasses things uh, and, 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 and agendas or ideas or thoughts of encampments and trusting those more than we trust the voice of a neighbor who's saying, but can you hear my heart? Can you see my perspective? Can you understand? Because I love the Lord God too. And this is how my life is lived out in a world that is broken. This is my experience. And by the spirit of God, may I communicate to you blind spots that the Holy Spirit may be trying to give you vision and can you communicate to me your questions or what you think or and can we civilly discuss these things and ultimately know unity by his Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will lead us into truth in all things and sometimes I think we get deceived in thinking that love to love one another always looks really um, kumbaya we are the church love is is comfortable and easy and gentle and and this is not a full picture of love love is dynamic and powerful and and sacrificial and not afraid to point out the sins that we see um so that we can 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 call up our brothers and sisters if i had a husband who didn't hold me accountable that would make for a pretty pitiful marriage if I had friends who just thought love was safe and comfortable and never confronted me when I was out of line with the Spirit of God, those would be pretty fruitless, feel-good, yes-men friendships that would yield nothing. We need to love one another in the fullness of refining, sanctifying, sacrificial, dynamic love. And God also gave me a whole unpacking on how the book of Esther just like blueprints how to do this well. I'll have to do another Insta Live for that because I'm going to run out of time on here. But I, I want us to know that we must pray, God, give your servants an understanding mind and govern me that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern your great people? You are, Father. You are, Spirit. By the blood of our Messiah, you are able to do all things, not by our strength, not by our might, not by our power, but by your Spirit. And that is going to flip tables in your temple. 
And we all want to think, well, praise God, if he unifies us by his spirit, then Tammy will agree with what I believe. No, Tammy's probably going to have some things disoriented, and you are too. We're all going to have tables flipped as we seek day in and day out to understand the heart of God because his heart isn't so easily packaged in a box that we get the first day. No, he brings us unto maturity, into depth. He teaches us and leads us as we go. And the greatest prayer I believe that we can all pray and ask and seek is, is a prayers of greater and greater humility. Teach me, show me, point out in me what needs to go. Refine me, sanctify me. It begins here. And it will grow out. But um, the enemy wants the baby cut in two. The father will use his sword to, to um, do heart surgery. But never to stab and sear and kill his body. He's Jehovah Rapha, the great physician who heals by refinement. But he is also our unifier, our leader, the one true God. Um, and so I just wanted to share that with you guys. I might just jump back on in a second and share the Ruth work or the Esther work. It's long though, but um, I hope this blesses you guys. I'm going to try to save it as a video. Sometimes live lets me, sometimes it doesn't. But um, I just... I just want to say those things and if fall comes and what he's shown, which I still only shared like a scratch of the surface because I am believing and in interceding for history to shift in response to the prayers of the saints. But if we see what is to come in the fall, come back to this video, to this word and remember Remember what Solomon knew to pray for. Remember the story of the two mothers. Remember the baby that was not to be divided in two, but that the, the, the mother gave his life for that she may stay unified. The baby may stay unified and alive. This is um, what our, our Christ has done. And so I want us to come back and remember when everything in you wants to allow a perverse spirit of fear and anger and frustration and resentment to Lord, you speak that the enemy and the adversary and his workers would know their place. They have been defeated by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimonies, and you invite in the spirit of the living God to speak truth, to bring understanding, to fill us with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We often read the scriptures where the demon is cast out and the house is swept up, but then it enters back and brings seven more. Well, do you want to know why I really think that the adversary has the ability to grab co-laborers and enter back in to bring greater affliction than what we once knew personally, as well as the body of Christ, as well as in totality, it's because we didn't invite in the Holy Spirit to inhabit that home, to, to batten down the hatches, to lock the door, to guard and protect, to seal and to fill. And so you do have an empty house. We can cast stuff out all day, but if you don't speak and loose from heaven the invitation of the fruit of the Spirit to abound, of his holy presence to inhabit and to transform and to guard and protect, then there's room for seven more to come back in because you've left a house well swept but empty and vulnerable. No, we will speak the truth. We cast out fear. We cast out doubt. We cancel the assignment of shame. We cancel the assignment of, of a domineering spirit that just wants to win by the flesh over another. Heavenly Father, remind us who our true adversary is. That this is not a battle of flesh and blood. Let us be able to separate the two and love the image-bearing creations of God with the full love of Christ, with the full heart of the one who paid everything, that we may know life and life abundantly by your Spirit, God, where we cancel the assignments and cast out what is not of you. Heavenly Father, we invite in more of who you are, Fill us to overflow and dwell in us. 
Bring your fruit, bring your gifts, bring your peace that surpasses all understanding. Let your voice raise in volume to my ear that's turned to you. Let me invite in the fullness of the spirit of the living God to flip any tables that need to be flipped in my temple, to point out and cut out anything that is defiling to you. Lord, make us holy. Make us holy. Give us your thoughts because they're not like our own. Give us your ways because they're not like our own. Give us your heart because it is not like this heart that's so apt to turn to stone. Heavenly Father, create in us a clean heart. Renew a steadfast spirit within us. And by your spirit, inhabit and dwell and lead us in the way that we should go, that we may know life by the spirit, a unified body walking in truth. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Okay, see ya. <laughs> I pray that blesses you guys. Y'all have a good one.